Hello and welcome. I am Deji Badimasi. Now, after months of high wire politicking alignment and counter alignment, the national leader of the All Progressives Congress, APC, and former governor of Lagos State, Bola Tinubu, has finally emerged the party's flag bearer for the 2023 uh, presidential election. He polled uh, a total of 1,271 votes, which is more than the 831 combined total of his 13 other opponents at the two day party primary held at uh, Eagle Square in Abuja. The former Minister of Transportation, Rotimi Amechi, came second with 316 votes. The Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshimbajo, had been widely considered the closest rival to Tinubu, his political godfather. But surprisingly, he could only manage to get 235 votes to come a distant third. Senate President Ahmed Lawa got 152 votes to take the fourth position. Meanwhile, at the venue of the primary, seven of the initial 23 aspirants stepped down for Tinubu, while one stepped down for Shimbajo. Another actually withdrew from the race, but did not declare his support for anyone. Now, only 14 aspirants, therefore, took part in the primary proper, which saw Tinubu emerge winner. The former Lagos state governor is now one step closer to fulfilling what he once described as a lifetime ambition. That's becoming the president of Nigeria. Tinubu will now challenge candidates of other political parties in next year's presidential election. His opponents will include Atiko Bubakar of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Peter Obi of the Labour Party, and Rabi Okonkoso of the New Nigeria People's Party. There's also no denying that Ashwaju Bola Tinubu has come a long way, but what are his chances in the 2023 general elections? Now I've been joined on the program to discuss this further by Joey Bukwe, who is... Uh, a chieftain of the APC. Mr. Agbukwe, thank you very much for joining us on the program. Let me start by asking you, were you surprised at the outcome? A lot of people had thought that the vice president was actually going to give uh, Bola Tinubu a run, but eventually it didn't turn out that way. Surprisingly, the vice president came a distant third. Tell me what would be the surprise for you in the primary. Well, did you know... Um, when you talk about politics, if you are a candidate, what is going to face you, what is going to stare you in the face or on your face is your, your, your structures. Your structures. Your friends. Your followers. People who respect to your people you have touched. That is the difference. The president, the Achiwaju has this. Even the vice president you are talking about is one of his structures. People he has made. So, to people like us, it is, a, it is payback time. So, one hundred, one, 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 one thousand two hundred and uh, one thousand one hundred. Is it one thousand one hundred and twenty-one or one thousand two hundred and twenty-one? Two hundred and seventy-one mm -hmm. votes. It, seventy-one votes. It's payback time. Almost, almost sixty-five, sixty, sixty-five percent of the votes. It's payback time, and it, it didn't. It is not a day's job. Achuaju has been aiming the presidency of the Federal Republic of Nigeria since the early 90s. In the day, from the days of, of, of um, you know, June 12, to the date. And if you look around, if you check well, if you have been monitoring the political developments in the country, you will know that he has, he has prepared for this office. And what happened at Eagle Square in Abuja is not a surprise to some of us who know Achuwaju very well. It is payback time. And, um, you know, we said it, even though some people did not believe us. But we know what this man has done. Thousands or millions he has touched. I am one of them. You know, if I tell you people are, that I have reached in my own little capacity here, and others that I know, hundreds of others that I know, you will know that I, I, I told you must have touched millions, directly or indirectly. So this is the man that is standing 
at the podium. Tell me why people will not pay back. So he had the day. Oh, many, many did not expect what came out. Yeah, yeah but, 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 but were you... But I know, I know, let, let I know, let you, let me, I know you ask you this. Like were, were you not surprised when, for instance, some of the candidates, I mean, some of the aspirants now from the Southwest, I mean, for, for instance, nobody had expected that um, uh, the former governor of Ogun State was going to announce he was stepping down or fire me was going... Were you surprised when, when they mounted the podium and announced they were stepping down for Tinubu? I was not. Let's take uh, Amosu, for example. It was at Shiwaju that initiated. He was in the MPP. I think he went two times to become governor of Ogun State under MPP. He didn't win. Achiwaju brought him into, into our party. And he won. I remember when he won the election, he came to Achiwaju's house. I was there. He lifted Achiwaju up and was, and was dancing around. Dancing around. You know, People should not forget where they are coming from. So these things are not, they are not we know it's going to happen. Seven of them. It was when those seven of them spoke that we know that the game is over. Were, were, you, were you surprised? Uh, some, so, some of us had thought, you, you know, when, when some of them actually stepped down, so, some, some of us had thought the vice president was going to step down as well, but, but he did not. I, I thought so. Because I was there. I thought so. But it didn't happen. It didn't happen. And the rest is now history. And I'm, There's something I, I, anybody I, I, can do about going it. Going forward, I'm, I'm just wondering what, what the relationship is going to be like. Because whether we like it or not, um, I, at some point, uh, relationship got strained between uh, the, the, the camp of uh, Bola Tinubu and that of the vice president. And I'm just wondering if, um, you know, what, what, what things will be like now going forward. Well, um, if you know Achiwaju, he's somebody that if, if you offend him, if he, you know, by the time you are fighting with him, he would have been planning of reconciliation. And you are going to see it happen very soon. Very soon. A matter of days or weeks. Let me, let me ask you about the, the drama, the high wire drama that we saw a day, 24 hours before the primary uh, the announcement by the chairman of your, the national chairman of your party, you know, and all, all the drama we saw, and uh, no question at all, the, the northern governors played a significant role to ensure that there was uh, an elective primary. But you know, your national chairman announcing that Ahmed Lawal uh, was going to be the consensus candidate and all of that. You, you tend to get the impression that everything was just designed to stop Bola Tinubu from, from picking the ticket, so to speak. What, what do you make of that high wire drama that happened? What baffled me is the position of the, the chairman of the party, hmm. Elijah Damu. That Elijah Damu could get involved in that ridiculous process. He made me to begin to question his capacity and integrity to lead APC in Nigeria. And the, the thing pained me to no end. And I, I, I saw the feeling, I saw how, I saw the courage of the man after that. You know, morale collapsed, you know. We couldn't believe it. So we, we were asking ourselves, so how did we get to this, to this stage? That few people will sit down, you know. And to me, it looks as if the, the president didn't know what was going on. Huh. Fear PDP, well. <laughs> <laughs> we fear BDPO. That man came from PDP. We fear him. Oh. He I, told me, I, 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 I don't by, know how we can trust him again. suggesting that he was being used by, he was used by the PDP? No, no, no. That is it. <laughs> that is it. When somebody like Ojo Sokala, former governor of, of, of our Abia state, told us <coughs> weeks back that it's going to be Lawan, we thought it was a joke. We don't know they were planning something. Until the evil plot collapsed on their faces in Abuja, and we just walk, walked away with victory. So, but we learned mm. a big lesson from there. Those who were asking for consensus saw consensus and ran away. We, we, you, 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 since you were there at the Eagle Square, you had the speech of um, uh, uh, Obun Naya Ono, you know, saying that uh, the, the, yes. the, the party was not fair to the Southeast, that 
the ticket should have been zoned to the yes. southeast. And the same thing was echoed by mm. uh, Ken Namani, the, the, former, uh, the former Senate yes. president. What, what's your take on that, that mm. your party eventually uh, did not zone the presidency is, to the it, southeast? It is a, is, it is, it is a fact. Mm. Deji, it is a fact that cannot be swept mm. under the carpet. I, I feel the pains. I'm from Southeast. I feel the pains. That 50, 52 years after the Civil War, none, no, no Igbo person has started the office of the presidency of the Federal, Federal Republic of Nigeria. We carry that burden. We, I carry that burden anywhere I go. As if we are not part of the, you know, we used to stand on the tripod. We used to stand on a tripod. It looks as if that tripod has, has been cut off. And partly, my anger is that we, as Igbo people, cause the problem. And that is what I've been speaking for years. That if we need to get to the center, we need to mm. connect. Nigeria does not stop in Igbo land. We have to build bridges. We have to connect. Or didn't you know that Buhari came in 2003, 2007, 2011, he didn't win until Southwest came in. Somebody did the work. How can you stand alone and you want to get the, the votes of other Nigerians and you have not built the bridges, you have not connected. You are fighting yourself, you are killing yourself in the south, southeast, you are killing police officers, you are killing, you are destroying police formations. How can, how can we be trusted? That is my pain. So, Onu made our day there, but what, what can you do? Are you, going, are you talking about Igbo presidency when our people are talking about secession? How can you combine the two? You want somebody to give you power to go and use it to divide Nigeria. That's what I've been saying for years. And that's what, that, that was what led to the burning of my house in the village. I don't have a house as I speak to you. And another, another question, and another, so another he thing I want us to talk about, sorry to interject, is, um, you know, you, you, mm. you, you would have expected that um, the, the Southeast would have used the primary to make a statement, so to speak. You know, just as I, I expected that they were going to use the primaries of the PDP to make a strong statement by at least vote mm. um, Igbo candidates now, or Igbo aspirants now, give, give the Igbo aspirants their, their entire vote. That did not happen in the APC. In the mm. APC, I mean in the PDP now. In the PDP we saw, and that, it did not happen it. in the APC primary as well. Because, for instance, mm. uh, the Igbo candidates didn't score, I mean, they, they didn't get anything at all. So if this, and there were Southeast delegates there. So even the Southeast delegates mm. did not vote for the Igbo aspirants. Just the same way they did not do so in the PDP as well. What does that say? Deji, we need to play better politics. Igbo, we have been voting PDP for years. Since this democracy started in 1999. Why did PDP find it difficult to zone this, to give it to Southeast? Let, the, let the candidate from the Southeast fail. They have never been in the AP, they have, you know, mm. been in APC, you know, one in um, Ebony, one in Imo States, two states there. But if we play better politics, if we believe, you know, I don't want to talk about it, if we believe in this country, I was waiting for other Nigerians to say, okay, um, let's see, let's try it. Okay, PDP, zone it to Southeast. Uh, uh, APC, zone it to Southeast. Let's see if we are going to heal the wounds of the Civil War. Despite the fact that they are not in, they are not, we have not played better politics. I was waiting for that. And I said, that was all I said. I said, if my principal at Chiwaju, that trained me and, and brought me to this stage, if... He's not going. Take it to Southeast. Hmm. Take it to Southeast. And if you go to Southeast, speak Omahi. And PDP, they will do the same thing. I put a caveat. 
if Achuaju is not going. Because Achuaju has positioned himself and they have made the sacrifices. You can't stay in your house and they'll bring these things to you. It's not served a la carte. It's not served by mere sentiments. You have to work for it. That is what I have not seen. And to make matters worse. They didn't even, they didn't give it, even give us the, the, the atmosphere to negotiate. Mm. To talk about it. Those of us that we talk about it, they are fighting us. And I said, okay, let us go and destroy Ibo land. You can't, you can't talk about... You can't, will you go there to campaign? With what is going on there? I, I do see what is going on. Exactly. For... for for close to 30-something years, I have not spent my Christmas in Lagos, but I did it last year. I have not visited home since last year. I don't, in fact, I don't have a home. So, you can combine two things at a time. That is my right. pain. So, Ono spoke very well. But in actions and deeds, we have not prepared the ground for that. For even the attraction parties from mm -hmm. other Nigerians. We are provoking them from what is happening in the Southeast on a daily basis. Those policemen that are being killed, are they not Nigerians? The police formations they are destroying, is it not government property? When you attack policemen on duty and soldiers, that's anarchy. You want to create a state of na nature where life is nas nasty, brutish, and short. It's to create, to make sure you don't have security so that we'll be doing what, what you want. That's what is ha happening in the South East today. That they can behave somebody openly. Call the person private part. Kill a soldier. Kill police. Destroy police formations. And you're talking about Igbo presidency. Those two cannot. Anyway. I, said, I, I, I went to sleep. I said, when the, when the madness is over, then we'll wake up. Anyway. And begin to ask questions about what anyway, is happening. The, 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 but anyway, but the, I'm in the, pain. The truth is, I'm in pain. There's mm. nothing I can do anyway, about the, it. The truth is, an Igbo presidency is still possible. At least there's an Igbo. There's going to be an Igbo man on the ballot. Peter will be is a candidate of uh, the Labour Party, even though they, they seem... The Labour There are no structures. That's the, there are no structures. Are you sure he's going to pick the ticket? We're talking about two major parties. <laughs> You're talking about the parties that are almost well, non-existent. Let's wait, let's wait and see. <laughs> it's not there. The party is not there. There's no platform. There's no structure anywhere for Labour Party across Nigeria. It's the mere waste of time. Peter B is only popular on social media. And they don't... Voters' cards are not on social media. <laughs> The voting centers are not there. All right, Mr. Joe Bukwe. You know, I understand these things very well. I've been a yes, party yes. man for years, so I know what I, what I, I, I know are that. About. I know that. But uh, yes, so yes. well, we just have to end it there. We thank you very much for your time and thank you for joining us on the program as always. It's okay. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah, thank you very much. All right, we'll take a short break and uh, we'll be right back. All right, welcome back. Let's continue the conversation. I'm now being joined by Mustafa Audu, uh, who joins us via, uh, well, he joins us via Zoom now from Abuja, and uh, he's a political analyst. Uh, Mr. Audu, thank you very much for joining us on the program. Let me start by asking you what you make of uh, Bola Tinubu's victory at the APC presidential primary. Um, to be honest, I think it was a fantastic one. I'm very proud of my party. Um, a lot of people spelled doom and gloom uh, prior to the convention and the primaries. But to be honest, this is the best primaries that has practically ever taken place in the history of political parties in Nigeria. It was free. It was fair. It was credible. Um, there were a lot of machinations, political calculations before. Everybody has a right to have different preferred candidates, which we saw. And... Um, at the end of the day, the most popular candidate emerged, which is what uh, democracy is all about. And, and so talk, we're talking proud about, because it was... Uh, talking about... Mach, ma, you, because you did talk about it, that there were, there were machinations and all of that. And we indeed saw that, especially absolutely. like 24 hours or less than 24 hours before the primary, when, when the chairman came to announce Ahmed Lawan as uh, the consensus candidate and all of that. What, what do you make? What do you think actually happened there? What, what, what do you think it was designed to achieve? I mean, the, the confusion and, and all of that that we saw 
just less than 24 hours before the primary? I, I think it's politics, you know, everybody has a right, even at home, you know, people have a preferred child, you know, so it doesn't matter. Anybody has a right to have a preferred candidate. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Um, we saw number two in the country and number three enter the race. So there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Where there's an issue is where a preferred candidate becomes an imposed candidate. Anybody can prefer anybody. Politics is about interest. So it's about who a particular person feels has their best interest at heart. So, but that doesn't matter because what is supposed to happen is supposed to be free, fair, and credible. So I think there's a lot to learn. We're not perfect. We're by no means the, the most perfect party in the world, but we're working towards perfection, at least towards the federal government level. I, I think this is close to perfection. The states and local government, some states, some local government requires quite a bit of work while some are as credible and as competent as this election that just took place. But um, all in all, I'm so proud of the party. All in all, you're going to see that there'll be no one going to court. There'll be no rank or no complaint. Mm. Everybody has had the right to express themselves and they have expressed themselves. But, you know, um, His Excellency, our incoming president, uh, Asiwaju Ahmed Bolatinobu, is the one who had the best way of expressing himself. And he got the the delegates and the electorates to believe in him and to believe in his vision. And, and they voted likewise. You can see that he had the most spread. So he's had this as his lifelong dream and he has worked towards it. And also, I'd like to say it's good to see the hard work actually pays. You know, a lot of times we've seen people work so hard, then last minute someone will come out of nowhere and, and, and win. But this time around, we've seen that um, he's worked so hard and Whatever was that happened close to the end doesn't matter because it's politics, you know. If he was in any other camp, he would most likely try and maneuver his way to the top. But let, let, let me, let, you, you talked about spread and then you, you're describing as, as incoming. Of course, he, he still has an election to, to, <laughs> to, to take part in. He oh, he has, has won already. We won already. We won. But you we, seem to because be Because it's clear we understand mean, Nigeria the, the, the and election. our brothers in the South want to be carried along. So everyone feels that this Nigerian project is there. So we can't have power in the North after eight years decide to keep it in the North. That doesn't show equity. But, but let, me know, ask, let, let, me, let me quickly ask you this. The, the, how, how do you see him faring against... Uh, uh, the former Vice President Atiku Abubakar, who is uh, the candidate of the opposition party. How do you see him faring in that election against him? I see it as a very easy victory. Um, the South and the North have gone into competition before. I think President Goodluck Jonathan Wednesday went against uh, Atiku. And it was clear that, you know, the pulse of the country was, was for the South. So mm -hmm. the South won President Goodluck Jonathan. So I think that will be the same thing again. The pulse of the country is with the South, so the South will end up uh, winning again. Hopefully. And um, for, for your party, of course, no, no, quest, no question that um, uh, a lot of work would need to be done. What, what do you think uh, your candidate needs to do now in terms of unifying the party and getting every member on board to support and work for him? Uh, I think that's an easy task, getting um, other people, getting other people to work on or uh, together is very easy simply because the elections were rank of free. If there was cheating or imposition, people will not be carried along. But I think the elections were so transparent. Um, everyone that felt that they, they could, you know, lead the country through our party, express themselves, had the chance to interact with the delegates. I don't think any of the delegates were locked in one corner for one aspirant alone. They were all free to interact. Mm. And everyone did the best that they could. So the delegates, I think, voted for who they believe in the most, you know. So I think it's very easy. The party will come together. Everybody has already issued a congratulatory message. message yes. And um, all, all young people, too, are very excited by this. Uh, His Excellency Astua Joanne Tinubu has a track record of, of bringing young people into office. So... This is a chance for us to prove ourselves, and this is a chance for 
for him to do to Nigeria what he did to Lagos. So we're all happy and, and looking forward to, to our victory and the swearing in come May 29th uh, next year. All right, we'll wait and see. Thank you very much, Mustafa Audu, for joining us on the program and for sharing your thoughts with us. All right, that's how much we can take on the program uh, this week. We thank you very much for watching. I'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.